Hi there, how are you today? Hope you're having a great time and making it an awesome day. So today we're gonna learn how to create HDR panorama in Lightroom. It's very simple. We're gonna combine multiple exposures and also multiple scenes and combine them to create something which is also seamless, which covers an extra area and at the same time has a lot of dynamic range to play with. It's gonna be fun, so without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Lightroom and I was up at the top of the Arch of St. Louis and it was an amazing scene from the top, so I took a panorama. but. For each shot for a panorama, I took three exposures. So have a look. I have this scene, three exposures for the same scene. One, two, and three. Look at four, five, and six. Three exposures for the middle scene and three exposures for the extreme right. So in actuality, I took 27 shots, but for this tutorial, I am not showing all of them because that will take a lot of time to process. You see, I took three images for the top, three images for the middle, and three images for the bottom, and I did combine them and create a panorama. And for all those nine images, three, three, and three, I took three exposures. So nine times three, your math is great, 27. For this tutorial, we just took three, and therefore, three times three, nine. All right. So all we have to do before we do any of the adjustments in the develop module, while we are in the library module, make sure you open up all those images, okay? So I created a collection of them and then have a look. I already made a collection of HDR panorama with that Im those images included just because it will be easy for us to see. Otherwise, if you have a folder of like 1000, 2000 images, it gets difficult to determine which images to combine, where is which. It's so organized this way. By the way, if you want to learn how to create collections, check out this video. Let's create the HDRs. So I'll select this, this and this. Although in the latest version of Lightroom, you only need the darkest and the brightest. That would be fine. But if you have taken three, let's combine it. Why not? Extra information. Right click here and Photo Merge HDR. Now, it will show you a preview HDR Merge Preview. Now, here's the thing. There's this thing called Deghost Amount and it's a very important parameter. If in all of your exposures, because you take it one after the other, if there is something which moved, you need to turn on Deghost. If you captured something where nothing is moving, you can keep Deghost off. But if there is something moving, you need to turn it low, medium or high, depending upon how much movement is present in your photos. In these images especially, there were cars moving. So we cannot afford to turn off the D-Ghost. Because if we do, I want you to have a look at this. Have a look. I'm not sure whether you can see it on this. These are looking strange. Two cars attached together. What happens is we are combining three shots. We took them one after the other. In this shot, the car was here. In this shot, the car was a little ahead. And in the third shot, the car was more ahead. So when you combine them, it kind of starts looking a little strange. So that's why we need to turn on D ghost. And for this, I'll just turn on medium. And just when I do that, have a look at the difference. So right now you see attached cars and things are looking a little awkward. See two cars over there, two same cars. These things will not happen if you turn on D ghost. And if there's any movement, you need to turn on D-Ghost. Have a look now. It's much more better, much more, more cleaner. And that's how we have to do it. We have to apply medium D-Ghost, make sure auto align is checked, and we need not apply auto settings. Click on merge. Also make sure when you're taking these three shots, you are in manual mode. Things like aperture needs to stay constant. You cannot have a shallow depth of field in one photo and everything sharp in the other. It will mess things up. So make sure you're in the manual mode. And for changing the exposure, you're either changing the shutter speed or the ISO. Okay. All right. So there we have, this is the HDR. How do we know this is the HDR? Have a look. This was applied with some adjustments. And also if you open up the film strip, there we go. Have a look. This image says image 4143-HDR. So we're going to make a sign, we're going to make a tick mark or something to identify that this is 
an str and for that we'll just select this and press p for pick see this flag over there it helps us identify it better let's do the same with five six and seven make sure all of them are selected to select all of them just make sure one is selected and then hold the control or command and select all of them or what you can do select one hold the shift key and select the seventh and what is whatever is in the middle will be selected and then right click here photo merge hdr the shortcut is control or command h as you already know by looking here and then everything stays the same it will give you a preview and then you would click merge now it's creating the hdr now while it is creating the hdr you can give it one more task and that is let's do eight nine and ten these three images right click photo merge where did that go hdr and then medium everything fine it will again give you the hdr preview and once it is ready click on merge again while it's processing i just wanted to discuss that hdr is not an effect hdr is simply high dynamic range when you combine three exposures it gives you much more dynamic range to play with if you have an image right and if you want to bring up the details in the shadows when you increase the details it will just only increase up to some extent not so much and even if you try to boost the brightness of the shadows too much that would result in noise hdr gives us a lot more dynamic range and you can see this okay so click on merge and i'll show you this so this is an hdr and we will press the p key to kind of pick it up and for this scene i guess this is the hdr hdr see the mark over there and we can also make sure by looking it over here hdr okay let's tuck it down and just to identify that. Now, let me show you something interesting. I showed this in one of the previous videos. So have a look, this is a regular image, okay? If you go to the develop module, right? Have a look at the exposure. If I increase it all the way to the right, it's plus five. And all the way to the left, minus five. So we can say the range is from minus five to plus five. However, let's go to the library back again and go to the grid view. The shortcut for the grid view is G. All right. So if you have a look at the HDR image, go to the develop module and have a look at the exposure. It's plus 10 and to the left is minus 10. So it's minus 10 to plus 10. So extra 10, five there, five there, right? So five extra stops. Let's go back to the library. Isn't that wonderful? Now select all the HDR images. So this one is the one, hold the control or command, this one and this one, and we will combine them and create a panorama of them. So right click on the image, photo merge panorama. So this is gonna create an HDR panorama. Have a look, the preview looks amazing. And this is a shot I took handheld. So there was nothing, no tripod over there at the top. So let's increase the boundary warp this really allows you to warp the edges to the boundary. And spherical works, you can try other ones, but spherical works for this one. Whoop, amazing. Now sometimes the boundary warp looks strange. At that time, you might have to crop it out. But in this case, I don't need to. Just increase the boundary warp, looks amazing. Now once it is done, click on merge. Have a look here, the process is happening at this moment as we speak so the panorama has now been created let's have a look at this looks really awesome doesn't it so let's go to the develop module and let's do some adjustments i think it will look great in black and white now that's totally upon you totally your choice how you process that all we will do in lightroom is the basic module everything else well can be done in photoshop and Things like removing this and removing stuff at the corner, that's best done in Photoshop. So we'll do just basic adjustments. Do you want it to be black and white or do you want it to be color? That's totally upon you. For now, I'm gonna keep it at black and white. And you can also try those presets. So click on this four, if, if you're using the latest version of Lightroom, click on this icon with four squares, okay? And there are, I think 17, yes, 17 black and white 
profiles that we can play with. See which one you like. I like this one. I'm going to select that. And how much of an effect of this you want. You can increase the effect or you can decrease it. That's totally upon you. All right. I like that. And I'm going to close it. So you can take your time to do all the adjustments here. You can just work on the highlights and kind of decrease the shadows even more and increase the whites probably. Take down the blacks, increase the clarity just a little bit and then decrease the highlights because when we increase the clarity, it just boosted the highlights as well. So let's decrease the whites a little bit. Okay, now one of the greatest ways to find out where exactly the white point would fall is by holding the Alt key and then moving the slider to the right slowly and gradually. Okay, now even if I increase the whites all the way to the right and the highlights all the way to the right, it's just not clipping. It's not clipping. Why is that happening? Well, we have selected a profile, black and white 12, where the brightest bright is just not white. And the darkest dark is just not black. If you do the same with the black, nothing happens. Okay. However, if you want complete control over your image, then instead of something like this fancy profile, you can use Adobe Monochrome. In that case, if you hold the Alt or the Option key, see artifacts and then move the whites slider. These areas are the areas where we are losing details. Okay. With the blacks, similarly, if you hold the Alt or the Option key, move it. These are the areas where we are losing detail. And one of the greatest ways of setting it automatically is by holding the shift key and double clicking on the whites. It sets it automatically holding the shift key and double clicking on the blacks. It sets that automatically. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to that. I kind of liked it. Black and white 12. I'm going to select that, close it. I loved it. Now you can increase the dehaze a little bit if you want to like so very little like a touch and let's decrease the clarity okay there we go it looks amazing I want to increase the exposure just a little bit and then decrease the highlights even more let's keep the exposure at 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 0 0.3 looks great does it? Let's keep it 0 0.2. That works fine for this image. Now, once you're satisfied with all this, you can right click on it and then edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2018 or whatever version you might be using. I want you to have a look at the dimensions. Have a look. It's 11,080 into 3779 pixels. That's totally huge. All right. So now you can uh, remove them in a lot of ways. I mean, the ways are limitless. Let's create a new layer and simply you can just take the brush and start painting on it. Or you can use the clone stamp tool as well. You can use the regular healing brush tool as well. So let's use the regular healing brush tool. Make sure sample is current and below. Let's take a sample by holding the alt key or the option key and click in here where you want to take a sample from and just simply fill it up. It's gone, right? Easy stuff, easy stuff. Okay, let's zoom out and see. A couple of dust areas over here. No problem at all. Let's take a sample from here and we line it up properly over there. And once you line that up properly, that is gone and taken care of. There's a little bit of problem over here. We will line it up properly and, and that's how you would go about it. Let's zoom out before, after that dust is gone. We can take care of the dust here as well. Simple taken care of. Now let's have a look over here. Now this is something I really wanted to talk to you about. These are the stains from the glass. So uh, how do we remove that? It's, it's like, let's try to remove this by using curves. Create a curves adjustment layer. So in these areas, things are becoming a little faded, which means that the shadows are not dark enough. So let's make the shadows dark by taking it a little bit to the right so that it matches with the other areas of the image. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's collapse it down. Select the mask, press control or command I. You already know the concept of mask. Black hides, white shows up. Now take the brush, 
zoom it in, decrease the flow, I would go about 20% and start painting on this area with white. Make sure the foreground color is white. I pressed X to toggle between the foreground and the background and I would paint simply in these areas, just in these areas. Easy stuff, no rocket science over here. I think I might go back to the properties and move it even more, something like that. And then go back to the mask and start resume painting. So th that's one of the ways of removing stuff like that. Let's zoom out and have a look how that looks. So here is the before with all of this and here is the after. That's one way to remove it. Similarly, you would clear up this corner and you would be ready to go. And here is the final result. What was the advantage did we get from the HDR? Let me just show you. So if we go back to the Lightroom and if we increase the shadows, have a look. The shadows do not have much noise. So let's zoom in. Let's have a look. No noise at all. And I'm zooming in one is to one. It's so clean. At the same time, if you use HDR, let me zoom one is to one. It's so clean. And if you do HDR, the more exposures you capture, the lesser noise you will have because you captured the perfect exposure for the shadows and also for the highlights. Therefore, you will have very less noise. Also, if you want, we didn't do it in this example. If you want, you can have amazing details in the shadows. Let's increase it. Have a look at the details in the shadows. It's so amazing. So I zoomed out. Let's have a look. Now I need to, of course, decrease the exposure here. Let's go with minus 0 0.4. Let's see. Yeah, you still can have amazing details in the shadows. Let's increase the contrast to zero and looks amazing, right? So that's the advantage of HDR. So that's pretty much it for this video. Just keep in mind, take different exposures of the same scene, one exposing the highlights and one exposing the shadows. Two are enough, you can take three, some people take five, some even take seven, okay? But it will increase your processing time and it's not so much required. Then what you do, you take different scenes, one, two, and three, or four, doesn't matter how many, depending upon how much you wanna cover, and then combine them in Lightroom. How to combine them? First of all, you create the individual HDRs of the same scene. So for this scene, you have three shots, you would combine them, okay? For this scene, you have three, you would combine them. So you would create HDRs of different scene. Then you would just select the HDR ones, okay? Without doing any adjustments in the develop module, first, we need to create a panorama out of it. Select them, right click, photo merge, panorama, and you're pretty much good to go. Then once that is created, you're free to make any adjustments. So that's pretty much it. Hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also do not forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all the support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.